How much RAM does your computer have? Now what if I tell you there's a phone that has 4 GB of RAM and costs less than 20,000 rupees. Interesting, isn't it? Now Asus has managed to beat everyone and make the world's first phone with such a specification. Hey guys, this is Aditya for Price Baba and today we're going to take a look at the Asus Zenfone 2. Asus has made a product that wants to stand out instead of merely competing against others. That seems like a good strategy. But there's one little problem. Asus has launched 6 different variants of the Zenfone 2, making it hard for the customer. A different naming strategy may have helped. The device made headlines for being the first smartphone to have 4 GB of RAM on board. Size-wise, it fits in between the Zenfone 5 and the Zenfone 6. The device, being a second generation phone in the series, a little design change would have looked really good. But Asus went with a tried and tested look. The metallic chin at the front, seen on every other Asus phone in the market, makes an appearance here as well. There are lots of little changes here and there. For example, the back has a brushed aluminum finish and it reflects light beautifully. A major redesign for this phone is moving the volume buttons to the back and shifting the power button to the top. While most manufacturers are shifting the power button to the side to keep it easily accessible, it is actually strange of Asus to do exactly the opposite. The phone has a curved back which goes from a thickness of 3.9mm all the way to 10.9mm. Now this curve makes it comfortable to hold in hand but also makes the phone look really big and bulky. The device does not rest flat on a surface and rocks like a seesaw. This weighs 170 grams but the design helps it mask its weight very well. It is fairly comfortable to hold the phone with one hand. The button on the top is inconvenient and might need some shuffling to reach it. That said, the double tap to wake gesture is a godsend. It made locking and unlocking the device much easier. Now the Zenfone 2 packs in a huge 5.5 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. The panel has good viewing angles but the glass is a little reflective. The whole display gets Gorilla Glass 3 protection which should keep it safe from minor scratches and drops. The phone has different display modes and also lets the user calibrate the display as per their wish. Now an option to quickly toggle between these modes is also present in the quick shortcuts pane. The auto brightness seems to be a little conservative though as it dims the screen down aggressively. But overall, it's a good display. Asus very own Zen UI has been updated to work with Android 5.0 Lollipop. So while there are little changes, the overall interface looks familiar and retains important bits from Lollipop. Now it features priority notifications and the ability to handle interruptions. There's also true silent mode where it mutes everything but unlike Nexus devices, this lets alarms go through. Something that was required in the first place. The phone also gets multi-user mode. Something that other manufacturers like Samsung, Xiaomi and HTC have skipped out on. The UI is minimalistic and there are very few apps that can be counted as bloat. Asus has taken a different approach and has listed all the system apps on the Google Play Store. As a result, it gives them the power to update each app individually when required. So while other manufacturers wait and club all app updates, Asus rolls it out individually. The phone comes loaded with lots of features and gestures that can be used to launch apps when the screen is off. For example, you can draw a C to open the camera or assign a W gesture for Chrome, WhatsApp or any other app you like. The overall experience on the phone is great and it comes second only to Motorola for providing useful additions to stock Android. Software aside, hardware is where all the differentiation is at. Now the review unit we have here is a high-end variant of the Zenfone 2. This comes with a 2.3 GHz Intel Atom quad-core processor and has 4 GB of RAM. What that translates to is that the phone can handle many, and I seriously mean many apps before it can slow down. For instance, here the device has over 2 GB of RAM free. Now that's more RAM than what most devices come with. Asus has also provided RAM cleaning, which doesn't seem required in the first place. Now this chipset is 64-bit enabled and as a result makes full use of the 64-bit support in Android 5.0 Lollipop. It runs smoothly without stuttering or lagging. Now the phone comes with a 13-megapixel camera at the back 
with dual tone LED flash. At the front, there's a 5 megapixel camera. Now the rear camera is blessed with ASUS Pixel Master technology that helps the phone click better images in low lighting conditions. Now the camera app is full of different shooting modes and reminds us of Samsung phones. Modes aside, the camera clicks strictly ok images but nothing spectacular. Pictures clicked in artificial light appear grainy and aren't very inspiring. The volume buttons can also be used to click a photo. Now storage isn't an issue on this phone. This device comes with lots of storage options right from 16 GB all the way up to 64 GB. Now irrespective of internal storage, all the devices have a micro SD card slot that accepts cards up to 64 GB. The first thing we notice after removing the back cover is the NFC circuit. Now while the back cover is removable, the battery on the phone isn't. It's powered by a 3000 mAh battery and it provides really good backup. The phone could easily go a day without needing charge. When it requires charging, the provided fast charger ensured that the device was powered up quickly. The Zenfone 2 is a dual SIM, dual active device. Now what that means is that both the SIM slots are active at all times. The SIM 1 slot supports 2G, 3G and 4G while the SIM 2 slot is restricted to 2G use only. So after using this phone for a while, what do we think about the Zenfone 2? The device is quite impressive on paper and can go through some heavy multitasking without sweating. The processor and RAM combination is quite good and the product feels powerful. If you want a no-nonsense device that gets the job done, get the Zenfone 2. But if you want a good camera, you'll have to look elsewhere. Also, Asus, you could have got the naming strategy a bit better guys.